News special coverage, Tracking Milton. Thank you again, everybody, for uh, staying with us as we get you those updates as they come in. The number one question from everybody, and it totally makes sense, uh, storm surge. You know, how much am I going to see where I live? So we've been doing this kind of once an hour where we take you across the entire area for the potential inundation. So there's that storm surge forecast from the National Hurricane Center, and this is incredibly important, what I'm about to say. All, everything that you see, including the storm surge numbers and, and even this visual, it is based off of the 5 o'clock National Hurricane Center advisory. We get a new one at 11. Models just shifted south. So there could be a change to everything that you're about to see to a certain degree depending on what they decide to do. So please keep that in mind. That's why getting these updates so critical and so important because Things can change within hours, if not minutes, because of the gravity of this situation. So we're going to use the 5 o'clock advisory. So this is the information at hand. So you have the storm surge, and then you have to factor in your elevation. The leftover is the inundation above high tide. The inundation above high tide. Now, in this example, and this is on the National Hurricane Center website, if you want to go home, uh, at home, and check where you live to see what it could be. It's all on the website, uh, so we can do it together here at home. Um, this is going to be what they call the worst-case scenario inundation. Now, for the National Hurricane Center and also me as a broadcaster, we would rather over-prepare you than under-prepare you in a situation like this. Your life and the lives of your family members that's our top priority. That's why we're here for you, and we're going to be with you every step of the way. So we got to over-prepare you than under-prepare you. Nine times out of ten, it won't reach all of these maximum values as well as how far it goes inland, but it's not impossible. There is that chance that if this storm positions itself in the worst possible spot, it could happen. And I do expect that most of this will verify. Most of it will. Maybe not all, but most of it will. Um, so let's zoom on in, and what you will see is, and what we'll do is we're going to kind of spread, uh, spend some time on individual spots so that way you can see some of the specifics. So we're going to start in Englewood, Minnesota Key, Grove City, and yeah, the storm surge is going to be significant. And the legend, the blue is one to three feet, the yellow is three to six. The orange is six to nine, the red is nine feet plus. What the National Hurricane Center has done, it knows the elevation geographically, it factors that in to this graphic. So for example, let me zoom on out, look at the difference between, let's say, Cape Hayes and Placida. It's flat, it's right along the water, but the elevation goes up as you approach 776 and near Gulf Cove, you see that? So that's a difference in elevation, so as a result, you see a difference in the amount of water at your ground level and the inundation. So that's why Fort Myers Beach had 15 feet of storm surge during Ian, and let's say parts of North Fort Myers, Cape Coral, you know, you, you guys all didn't see 15, but in that main corridor, especially along the most storm surge prone areas, they did. So elevation is a consideration. Let's uh, take you to Boca Grande. You can see areas of orange and red, South Gulf Cove. What happens is the, uh, the power of the hurricane, it pushes water up rivers and creeks, and that's why you see this, this type of look to it. Mayaka River, very susceptible. I had, if my memory serves me right, about five feet of inundation along the Mayaka River during Helene. So that would verify in this graphic as uh, during Helene, upper yellow to even uh, areas of uh, lower orange. El Joe Bean, and, and this is why the Charlotte County Emergency Management, they asked you to leave with their evacuation. It's because of how susceptible you are to surge in zones A and B. You'll start to see some specifics come up around Murdoch, Meadow Park Elementary, Port Charlotte, Port Charlotte uh, Beach Park, the Sun Seeker, Charlotte Harbor, and uh, don't worry, Ponte Gorda, we're going to swing back down. Uh, River Club, Maple Leaf, Harbor Heights, water getting pushed all the way up into southern and western areas 
of DeSoto County. You can even see some campgrounds. Um, but look at how tightly clustered this is. And that's a difference in elevation. The water can't physically get up. Gravity pushes it down. And that's why you see a big, big change. And that's why I, I know we kind of say this, that you know, one of the biggest misconceptions about uh, storm surge and evacuations is that you, know, you have to plan a trip to Jacksonville, Tallahassee, Orlando, and Miami in a last case resort just get away from the coast, get away from this. See how it can be the difference of just a couple miles that could save your life. You just gotta get inland. Um, we'll show you around Shell Creek, some of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the creeks and the uh, waterways where, the, where it is forced up from the strong wind. Uh, Cleveland, look at the difference in elevation around Punta Gorda Airport and then the heart of Punta Gorda. I do expect storm surge. We will have storm surge in Punta Gorda. We will, uh, Charlotte Park, you can see the sharp contrast. Tropical Gulf Acres, you guys are high enough, at least for most of the community, in this situation. Now, let's see at 11 what the National Hurricane Center does. They, based off their new forecast, will update this, and it may go more inland, so we have to see. That's why it's just so critical to stay here at Wink to get those updates. Burnt Store Village, you can see a bit of a contrast near Burnt Store Road. Now we're entering areas of Cape Coral. We zoom on in, you can see uh, Coral Oaks, Burnt Storm Road. Let's uh, reiterate the legend, blue one to three. The yellow is three to six. The orange is six to nine. And the red is nine feet plus. Pine Island Center all the way towards St. James City, uh, Sanibel, Captiva, as you can imagine, um, Sanibel Causeway. Let's take you into Cape Coral. Pelican Elementary, you can see a skyline, Chiquita, Cape Coral High School, areas of blue and yellow in a worst possible case situation based off of the five o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. There's Pine Island Road for reference and see how it gets a little bit higher as you get up in elevation and you see a difference in expectations. Um, so the big thing about me is I, you know, I've, like, I always love to hear from you guys on social media. I had a guy that reached out, hey, I feel like you're not showing North Fort Myers enough. Show North Fort Myers. So let's do it, shall we? For our viewers in North Fort Myers, uh, let's spread the love here. Here is a look at North Fort Myers High School. There's uh, State Road 78 and then uh, Bayshore. All the communities along the Caloosahatchee that did flood during Ian. Water getting pushed all the way towards. For reference, there's uh, exit 143 Bayshore. There's the interstate, as well as exit 141. That's as you get on 80. Lee Civic Center and that general area, very storm surge prone. Olga, Alva, you know, during Ian, we had water go all the way up towards the Franklin Lock. It's 25 miles inland from the Gulf, and that's the power of what a hurricane can do. Let's work our way towards Tice as well as downtown Fort Myers. Now you can see that even a couple miles trip on MLK, it gets higher in elevation and you're not as storm surge prone as right along the river. Uh, unfortunately, the Edison Ford Winter Estates, um, there's Lee Memorial, Fort Myers High School, extending all the way towards uh, the Tanglewood Elementary, there's the Edison Mall. And if you're just tuning in and just joining us, what we're doing is we're giving a tour of specifics here, there's Bell Tower, FSW. I remember um, uh, Health Park had flooding during Ian, that's where my little baby boy was born. And uh, I remember the videos coming in from there and here's the reason why. All the orange and the red, that is the surge. And then Fort Myers Beach, let's take you all the way towards, and again, I'm trying my best to make sure I get everybody here. Um, there's Hammond Stadium, San Carlos Park, you can see where the water tries to creep in, our creeks and our rivers. You'll start to see the Imperial River pop up here shortly. There's Cedar Creek, let's zoom on in. Coconut Point Mall is gonna be uh, popping up shortly. Yep, there's the Imperial River. So the water gets pushed up. And for the Imperial, unfortunately, it, sometimes it can be a double whammy with heavy rain and freshwater flooding of the river, but also saltwater flooding as that gets pushed up too. 
just too much, too much water. Um, Barefoot Beach, Wiggins Pass, Vanderbilt Beach. Now look at the contrast between uh, I-75. Yeah, really, one of the only exceptions to this is near the Caloosahatchee. Near the Caloosahatchee, uh, mainly I would say in Lee and Collier County, you know, that's one of the only areas that is storm surge prone. But in most spots in Collier County, you know, you get east of that interstate and you're good because the elevation is high enough. Let's zoom back in and you'll start to see this. We're, you know, we're getting into the point of our Mercado, um, Park Shore, there's Pinewood, Sun Terrace, Naples Airport. You can almost see the runway and uh, they did flood during Ian. Bayfront, uh, Tin City, and uh, the list goes on. East Naples, Isle of Collier Preserve, some of the neighborhoods and the communities. And this is pretty much a direct correlation to the evacuation zones. And they look at these graphics, and that's why they make the decisions that they do. It's based off of your proximity to the water and your elevation tied in. Marco Island Airport, Isla Capri, Tiger Tail Beach, really the heart of Marco Island, Goodland. San Marco Road is going to be flooded to and from Goodland. And then uh, Port of the Islands. And then for a final stop, we're going to work our way towards uh, Everglades City Plantation Island as inundation is expected with this storm. So that is a tour of the worst case scenario possibility. It's not a given, but it's a possibility. We want to just make you aware of it. If you want to see specifics, make sure to check out the National Hurricane Center website. They have all of this. I basically just took the data and put it into our weather system so you can do that at home. But um, we have to see if this changes at 11 when we get the brand new advisory and if they do make an upgrade and an increase to our storm surge forecast, this will be different. But you're in good hands because we will show you that update as soon as it comes in.